Ukraine's new president, Petro Poroshenko, has taken office at a ceremony attended by his Western backers. The inauguration in Kiev comes despite an intense military crackdown in the eastern provinces. Uh, those are the ones which uh, boycotted the election, having earlier proclaimed their independence. RT's Paul Scott now with more on the trials and challenges the new leader, leader is facing now. Well, Poroshenko has plenty of challenges in his new role, notably how to unite a divided country. Vast swathes of the east of Ukraine fail to recognize the election that brought him to power following the coup that led to the ousting of his predecessor. Let's take a look now at some of the challenges facing the new man and some of the commitments that have already fallen by the wayside. Kiev is using tanks and aircraft against anti-government protesters there in what's been described as the active phase of an anti-terror operation and it's having severe humanitarian consequences. Poroshenko may have got over 50% of the vote across Ukraine but he seems to have little support in those eastern provinces and though the new president promised dialogue, no talks have been initiated so far. Talking about gas, energy is also a major headache for the new man. The gas dispute with Russia has been dragging on since spring, with Ukraine owing Moscow $4 billion in unpaid bills. There's been no breakthrough in the talks, and Ukraine is facing a cutoff in supplies on June the 10th. Poroshenko has also vowed to forge closer ties with Europe. The political half of the association agreement with the EU has already been signed. The question now is when Kiev will put pen to paper on the economic half. It was the previous president's decision to delay signing the agreement that led to his eventual ousting. Yanukovych claimed it would cripple the Ukrainian economy, which is already on the brink of a default, despite a $17 billion loan from the IMF. Well, the new president sees a continuing sit-in in the heart of the capital. That's been here since winter, and of course it helped February's coup. I was walking around Maidan Square on the eve of the president's inauguration, and people there told me the change of president isn't enough, and they refuse to leave before they see deep-rooted reforms. We can't leave. We're scared that we'll lose everything we've achieved. We just have to stay here. Politicians can say what they want, but they have not fulfilled their promises. And finally, when running for office, billionaire Poroshenko promised to sell off assets from his business empire and concentrate solely on politics. He said he wanted to become a new type of leader who concentrates all of his energy and all of his time on serving the people. However, that promise was broken when he decided to keep control of his TV outlet, Channel 5, and he bought a new factory. Well, today's inauguration was attended by a number of Western diplomats, including US Vice President Joe Biden. But it seems, despite the support, that Poroshenko is inheriting a difficult job in a country facing a number of challenges.